guys, let's let's just take a moment and and think about the 2022 season that was for the Denver Broncos. There oh, was, do we have to? <laughs> Can we please was, not? We were counting bathrooms and toilets and houses and touchdown passes. Uh, everyone was let's ride until we let's rode it into the ground in a fireball. Um, I, the memes were fantastic. Uh, alas, I think the only bright spot for the Broncos at all last year was Jerry Judy. At least was, and it, was the season ending. It wasn't a bright spot as much as maybe it was like <laughs> a warm spot. You know what I mean? Um, his average finish week 14 on last uh, last season was wide receiver 20. Uh, but three of those were in the top 15, including two finishes in the top three. He he uh, amongst all the crap that was the Broncos season last year, Jerry Judy did show some explosiveness and that he could hook up with Russ and, and make things click. Uh, he had five catches, at least five catches in each of his final five games. Um, just needs to be more consistent this year. How do you do that? Well, you get Sean Payton to coach your team, who has supported year after year of wide receiver one production, Michael Thomas, Brandon Cooks, Marquez Colston. Sean Payton has already come out and said that Jerry Judy is going to be a huge part of what we do this season. His wide receiver, his ADP right now is wide receiver 24. He was wide receiver 20 for the last five weeks of the season in a crap year with a crap coaching staff and a throwaway season was wide receiver 20 on the back end. And then you add Sean Payton and everybody else in that offense. And he's still being drafted as wide receiver 24 lower. So his stock goes down. I think he's a steal. He's going to be the Broncos wide receiver one this year. Um, and while I continue to stall, I am going to hunt for his ADP as well. So, Alex, how do you, in the meantime, how do you feel about yeah, Jerry 80, Judy, who's currently 80, going 55th 80. overall? Yep. Yep. End of, end of round four, uh, which is – or sorry – is that right? Yeah, end around four, which which is pretty good value. Uh, or I guess middle around four, but still, for somebody that you think is going to end up being middle around a, five, a top close guy. though, man. We're we're going to get there. What? No. Do it with me. Twelve is one. Twenty four oh, is two. Yeah. Thirty six. Forty eight. Fifty five gets you to five point five. Even better. So again, 4. somebody 4. finishes as wide receiver 21 in half PPR last year. We have them in our low 20s. I think we'll end up bumping that up a little bit as we get closer to the season, especially depending on if he looks okay in the preseason. Um, and if Russell Wilson can pull his head out of his ass from last year uh, would, would be very helpful as well. So v very excited about that Broncos offense. I, I do think that the sky is potentially the limit for Judy who, um, has kind of not been as good as I think anybody was really expecting him to be coming out of college. Switching over to a running back uh, value sleeper, whatever you want to call it, Alexander Madison. I, I think he's potentially a league winner for you in your drafts. Fantasy Pros currently has him as running back 22. ESPN's PPR cheat sheet has him at 23. Madison's ADP on sleeper is currently 64 and a half. He's going as the 25th running back behind running backs with oh. names such as James Conner, DeAndre Swift, Dalvin Cook. I don't, that doesn't really make any sense. Cam Akers, Damian Pierce, Miles Sanders. Jason, how many games do you think Alexander Madison has with 49% or more snap share in his career? 16. Six. He has six oh. games with more than 49% of snap share. Okay. I'm going to read you off some stats. Okay. Tell me if you like what you hear. Week five, 2020 at Seattle, 20 carries, 112 yards, three catches, 24 mm. yards, 
15.1 fantasy points in half PPR. Like that. Week 16, 2020 at Detroit, 21 carries, 95 yards, one touchdown, three catches, 50 yards, 22 fantasy points. Let me think. Oh, yeah. Like that, too. Okay. Game number three, week three, 2021 versus Seattle. 26 carries, 112 yards, six catches, 59 yards, 20.1 fantasy points. Let me just noodle that out. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. Okay. Week five, 2021 versus Detroit. Again, Seattle, Detroit. I don't know what's going on here, but 25 carries, 113 yards, seven catches, 40 yards and a touchdown, 24.8 fantasy points and half PPR. Goodness. All right. Week 13, Detroit, 22 carries, 90 yards, one touchdown, three catches, 34 yards. Week 16 versus the Rams, 13 carries, 41 yards, one touchdown, three catches, 29 yards, 14 and a half fantasy points. In all, that averages out to 19.4 fantasy points per game. That would be the number one running back in fantasy football last year. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be the number one running back in points per game. Side note, Eckler averaged 18.8 in half PPR, CMC 18.5. If you were to say, hey, is Madison a threat out of the backfield from a catching standpoint? I probably would have said no. But in those six games I just read off, his catches were three, three, six, seven, three, and three. Pretty good floor for a guy that you wouldn't expect to be, you know, lighting the world on fire and Delvin never really seemed like a receiving back. He had a couple, but he shouldn't be going where he is. We have him ranked as our 12th ranked running back. It's possible we're too low on him. If uh, we're recording this July 26th, that they don't sign anybody. And I don't think they will because they can't really spend any more money on their offense. He's a bona fide league winner for where he's going at pick 64. It's straight up disrespectful. They signed him with a two-year, $7 million contract extension this year. It seems like he's going to be their guy. Schedule week 15 at Cincy, home against Detroit, home against Green Bay. That's fine. Domes the last couple of weeks. I legitimately think he's going to win a bunch of people leagues if he stays healthy because he's just going too low. That offense is going to score with Kirk, Jefferson, Madison. He had the most touchdowns he's ever had last year. I believe he had five I think he's a t- he's a he's a RB one going as a twenty fifth running back or in the twenties. He he wins you the league if if you get him where he's being drafted. He where wins. he's currently being drafted, like his ADP can't stay there. But we're only a month out. Like it's not and really, it has stayed there. I was just saying it's not really rising. Like where's where is the hype? I don't know, but if if I guess we're gonna die on a hill, I I'm fine with it being the Alexander Madison Hill. Like where where are kind, you gonna kind draft of a fun him? hill to die on? Uh, I think I think you can get, take him in the fourth and and be perfectly fine. Based on his ADP, you don't have to take him earlier than that. He's I if you go zero RB, that's your guy. Yep. If you go, you know, run or like Kelsey and two receivers or wide receivers and Justin Fields or, you know, you throw one of them quarterbacks in there with a couple of receivers, whatever. Alexander Madison slam dunk in the fourth. Yeah, he he's a league winner just sitting out there uh, and you don't have to spend that much to get him and he's going to perform like an RB one or at least I think he will. I mean, that's that's his track record. He's he's been one of, if not the premier handcuff for the last several seasons for yeah. anyone that had Delvin Cook. Yep. In so. in a in a top 10 offense points wise. So uh, li- light it light up me some Alexander Madison. 